Welcome everybody to this quick tutorial on various ways to insert a clip using VS Code and the Extend Script API. Welcome everybody, um, and today we've got a nice little piece of code for you which will allow you to tune some knobs here at the top. I'm allowing you to specify what clip from the project panel you want to insert into which number of track, um, and whether you want to overwrite that track or insert it at the beginning or the end. Right, so let's kick off this code um, and see what it does, and then tune some of these knobs, see how things vary, and then dig into the code and see what's, what's happening. Right, so I'm executing this code and we can see that we've inserted this blue clip here at the end of our sequence. And why is that? Well, we've said we want to insert into track zero, right? So we've specified that at the top. Uh, we don't want to overwrite, right? So we just added it towards the end. Uh, we want to insert it at the end. And the number of clip we want to insert is number clip number zero. So that's actually this nov promo clip I've got going on here. And why exactly it's clip number zero? Um, that is because the way we are getting all our values from the project panel is via this root items variable. And the root items children variable has got a list of all the project items that are currently in the project. But these will be indexed based on when they were dragged in. So for me, my first video that I dragged into this project was this nov promo, um, and that is why it's just first in the list, right? So if we're saying number clip to insert zero, we're inserting that nov promo. Okay, well let's let's tweak some of these things. Um, let's say overwrite, or maybe let's tweak this insert at the end false, right? So I'm gonna run this again, and we'll see that that same clip actually gets inserted here at the beginning. I'll go ahead and remove that, move things back. And then I'm going to set this over this overwrite to true, right? So we're still going to go and insert our clip at the end, but we're actually going to overwrite this pink nov promo with a blue nov promo, and that blue nov promo is coming from our project panel. And boom, awesome stuff. Right, next one that I just want to show you guys, um, we can also toggle this little insert into track one. So if I go and toggle track one, uh, then our track will actually be inserted at track one. All right, guys, so some fun code to play with, uh, but let's dig into what is actually going on here um, and tear it apart a bit. To do this, um, I am going to set up a debug point. Um, I'm gonna set up a breakpoint and run my debugger, stepping through each line of code as we, we go, carry on, and we can see actually to, uh, what is happening to the variables within the variable inspector. Cool, so our knobs, those are basically just variables that we declare at the top. Um, then we need to get a grip on our sequence, right? So this is gonna be very normal practice for you in any of your scripting of Premiere Pro, is you need to get a handle on that sequence because within the sequence is all our tracks, is all our clips and all the good stuff that we want. So here we're just defining a variable seq to hold our sequence, which we'll use a bit later on. Right, so we've got a handle on our sequences. I'm gonna step over here to our next line in our code, and I did that just hitting this little uh, step into uh, function on our VS Code debugger, little button there. Looks like uh, F11 is the shortcut key for that as well. Okay, so we're getting a grip on a list of all the available clips that are in the project item. And to do that, we are using this app.project.rootitem.children. Now that does not make a lot of sense, don't worry, oh, it really doesn't. Um, but if we go to the documentation, we sort of get an idea for why all of our project items contained in the project is residing in this root item children attribute. So we're going here to the project item um, and we see that the root item definition is a project item representing the root of the project um, and it'll always be of type item type bin. So basically this is a way for the API to represent all of the project items within the project, right? So it makes a, a bin for all of these project items and you can access that bin by going to project.rootitem. But then we don't care so much about the actual bin, we want the things what's inside the bin. So thus we're going to the .children attribute um, to get all the project items and we're storing those in this variable titled available clips. 
Right, so two things that you just have to be cautious about when you're using these uh, insert and override clip methods. Uh, you can't insert the current sequence that you're working in, right? So for me in Premiere Pro over here, the sequence name is the current sequence that I'm working in. Uh, so if I set my uh, my clip, my number of clip to insert to one over here, um, I remember when I created this project that I first dragged in my image. So my image, my nov promo image is the, the first clip, the zero with clip in this uh, children's list, right? So all this available clips. And directly the second thing that was created was my sequence, right? My new sequence that was created when I dragged my nov promo into the, the sequence monitor. So if I try and execute this with number to insert one, meaning we're gonna pick up on that nested sequence, not the nested sequence, we're gonna pick up on that sequence um, and gonna try and insert it into itself, I'm gonna get this beautiful warning saying, uh, no, you, you cannot do that. Bad argument, um, can't do that. All right, so if you're seeing this error, uh, just check that what you're trying to insert from your project panel is perhaps not an empty sequence or the current sequence that you're trying to insert it into. Great stuff. Um, then we're gonna rock back here and we are just going to set back our number clip to insert back to zero, right? So we're just gonna get back into this nov promo, this blue nov promo that we got here. Um, let's set back our inserting clips into track zero. And let's just see that everything is working awesome. Awesome, there we've inserted that into track zero. Great stuff. Let's continue through this code. I'm just gonna put a little breakpoint in here on line 14, where we are basically creating our variable clip to insert, right? So this clip to insert is gonna be of type project item. And you can see it here in our little variable inspector. If I step one on, um, we actually get some values in here. So now we can see, yes, it is that nov promo video that we were looking at. Um, and it's got a few extra attributes that we can, we can have a look at. But most importantly, what we're gonna use it for uh, when we get to our little insert and override clip, these methods uh, expect a project item to go in here. If you forgot how these uh, functions work, recommend you go check out this uh, documentation. And on here you'll see that if you're on a track and you're inserting or overwriting a clip, all right, so these are these methods that we're looking at. Um, the first variable that it is looking for is that source project item. Similarly for our overwrite clip, that source project item. So this clip to insert, um, we're actually getting a grip on that source project item. We're getting a project item for our items lying in the project panel. And then we can continue, right? So then we need to get a hold of the track where we want to actually go and insert these values into. And to do that, I'm using this little uh, video track variable and I'm just saying, hey, let's go to our sequence. And the little sequence variable that we defined there and we go into our video tracks and we go and ask which track do we want to go and insert our values into. Um, and for us, it's gonna be our zeroth track, right? So remembering everything in extend script, we're starting with arrays, with lists, we're starting counting at zero, right? So our first element's always gonna be zero, um, which is a bit counterintuitive of what's going on in Premiere Pro as our track numbers start there at track one. Cool, so we're inserting into track zero. That's what's happening here. And we're just getting a handle on this video track, right? So we're getting a handle on this track object. Again, I'm gonna rock a breakpoint in there, hit run. In our variable inspector, we can see that the video track object, there we go, is of type track, right? So if you're wondering, hey, what other methods do I have available for me on this track? Again, head over to the, the documentation and check out the track object. Cool, then we're getting a bit more fancy, right? Uh, we have a few Boolean values over here, uh, which is basically true and false, right? So you've got a yes or a no. Um, and the two that we have here is we've got overwrite and we've got insert at end. Right, so chatting about our insert at end. What this is basically doing is it's checking, it's asking, do we want to insert our clip at the beginning of all the clips that are currently in the video track where we want to insert our clips? Or do we want to insert our clip at the end of all of those clips? And in order for us to do this programmatically, 
right? So again, that's, that's always going to be, have to be the translation that you're doing. Um, you've got this uh, requirement in your mind. You want to have this, you want to do this. Um, and now you need to go and look at the Lego blocks that are available to you within the API and see how you can manipulate them, put them together uh, to actually get to what you want, right? So this insert at end uh, functionality, the way that I've approached it was to say that let's go and maybe get the clip, the last clip in our current video track, right? So for that, I'm first just getting the total number of clips uh, in our current video track using this little video track dot clips dot num items. And then we know how many clips there are. And now we just want to go and get the end point of the last clip, right? And that's what's going on over here. We're saying video track dot clips. We're saying num clips minus one, right? Uh, because we're always starting counting at zero, uh, you'll see this quite a lot in programming, where we have the total number of clips, but because we started at zero, we're gonna have to minus one um, to get the last clip. Then here we're touching on something that we haven't really talked about a lot, uh, is the dot end dot text. Now anything in Premiere Pro and the Premiere Pro API um, that is related to time is usually in a time object, right? And that time object has a few attributes. Seconds is one and the quite intuitive one. Ticks is the other one. And ticks, not that intuitive. Um, from what I've gathered, uh, it is really this arbitrary large number that is useful when working with different frame rates. Um, again, this API is for general purpose, so it doesn't know what frame rates you're gonna be working in. Um, and it needs to build, be built in such a way uh, that you can insert clips from arbitrary frame rates, not necessarily specified things. And they needed some way to measure distance without being dependent on frame rate or on seconds, right? And ticks was sort of the solution there. Um, so to give you an idea, ticks are directly related to seconds. Um, there is a, a large little constant that, that I'll give to you, I'll point out to you now, this constant. Um, so this is what I can gather, a really large number that most frame rates will fit into, right? So instead of working with one second and then having huge decimal numbers, you know, saying that this clip is located at 0 0.00005 seconds of the, the sequence, uh, Adobe has introduced this concept of ticks, which is basically just whatever you've got in seconds times this large number. Um, so you don't have to worry too much about them um, as when you working with ticks, uh, any time object within the Premiere Pro API has got the ability for you to return the ticks. So uh, you can just return the ticks and then the next function that you need to call with them, you just pass them on. So you don't have to worry about them too much, uh, but just be aware that's why we're hitting this end.ticks um, as opposed to end.seconds. Cool, um, and again, quickly just touching base on that API. Um, you can see here the override clip uh, and the insert clip methods. Uh, this time option that it actually specifies here, the time at which to add it in ticks, right? So the documentation is quite clear there, saying that we can't specify seconds here, can't specify frames, we need to specify ticks. Right, so we're here at our if statement with whether we want to insert our clip at the end of our sequence or at the beginning. And the way we've approached this was to say, hey, can we get a handle on those last ticks, right? Um, so I'm jumping here into Premiere Pro and basically the logic that we followed here is we said, hey, we're gonna be working on track zero, right? That's what we said here. And we want to go to the final clip. So we've gone to this final clip and then we've asked, hey, what is your end ticks, right? And that's what we've stored here in destination ticks. If and only if, we want to insert the clip at the end. Else, if we don't, then our destination ticks are just gonna be zero, right? Because that's just gonna be way at the beginning of the timeline. Great stuff. Then our last little knob that we can play with is this overwrite knob. And the again, the way you, you come with a problem saying, I want the ability to overwrite or not overwrite. And then you've got tools in your toolbox and you've got to think of a way to, to use these functions in the API to actually achieve your goal. And the way that I've gone here is just put a little if statement saying that if we want to overwrite, then we're actually going to call this overwrite clip method, um, passing it the clip that we want to insert, keeping in mind that's that reference to the project item in the project panel and the destination text where we want to insert that. 
else if we don't want to overwrite we're just going to insert the clip in this video we've looked at various ways that you can insert your clips from the project panel into the sequence we've looked at some if statements um, and we've discussed a bit of ticks and how they relate to seconds but ultimately the only way that you're really going to get to know this api is if you get your hands dirty so i urge you take this code links in the description and play with it you know try and s tweak these knobs at the top here um, and see what happens when you make the track you know a number that doesn't exist currently this code only works for video clips you know try and maybe alter it for audio clips maybe even add a little knob at the top saying you know what media type do i want to apply maybe you want to apply to both again take this as sort of base starter code and and play with it break it drop the issues that you're facing into the comments and we'll see if we can solve them next time.